Why is it that people live mindless lives? Ruining their destiny, making wrong choices, going the wrong way. When the Bible declares, I have the mind of Christ and Jesus Christ has been made wisdom unto me. Why is it so? Because although the potential is there, the access is denied. Prayer is not just something you do when you're in trouble, when you're under harassment, when you're sick, and when you're in need. Yes, you can, you can pray when you have all those issues in life. But prayer is not only a channel for your needs to be met. Prayer is a channel for communion. Where God can begin to flow through us His wisdom. Prayer is the access to the mind of Christ. Prayer is the access to the wisdom of God. What does the Bible say? We have the mind of Christ. That means the potential is there. Jesus Christ has been made wisdom unto us. But why is it that so many live foolish lives? Why is it that people live mindless lives? Ruining their destiny. Making wrong choices. Going the wrong way. When the Bible declares, I have the mind of Christ. And Jesus Christ has been made wisdom unto me. Why is it so? Because although the potential is there, the access is denied. The route to and to access what God has given unto us. Let me remind you, what that is, is, is it is our inheritance. It rightfully belongs to me. The mind of Christ belongs to me as a child of God. The wisdom of God is being formed within me. But I need access. So when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, I'm not wasting my time. Because He helps me to pray when I don't know how to pray. Is that what the Bible says? Talk to me somebody. So you see, this is why I insist that every one of us should spend time in praying. Praying is not so that you can become religious. Praying is so that you can have deep relationship. It's not religion, it's relationship. And it is through that intimacy and, and you have access into these awesome and powerful things that God has set aside as our inheritance. It's very important. Prayer is very powerful. Brother Hagen said something. I mean, churches, we, we as a church need to be a praying church. Every one of us, not only individually, but also coming together and pray. See, when I say pray, so many of you are not even praying. You're just mumbling something. No, because we don't know how to pray. It's a sad state of affairs. And I take the blame for it because I need to train you how to pray. Brother Hagen was sharing a testimony of a pastor who he said had um, gone into a town where there was no church. And he began to plant a church there. And the church grew. And he said, in 37 years of my ministry, this is that man, we never bury, buried a child. 37 years of my ministry, I never buried a young man. 37 years of my ministry, we never buried a middle-aged man. Because he said, every time news came to them about somebody being sick, the church rallied together and started praying. Sometimes three days, most of the time three days. But he said, they were praying 24 hours. Not everybody for 24 hours, but there was somebody praying for 24 hours. Somebody kept going, kept going, kept going. I said, never. What a testimony. Can you see the power in prayer? Amen. 
He said, call unto me and I will answer. Which means, if I don't call, there is no answer. And when you call, you don't just make a casual call. It's a call with persistence. You don't stop until you receive the answer. So many of us start well, but we get tired and we stop praying after a while, maybe a few hours, maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks. No, you keep praying, keep thanking God, keep continuing until you receive the answer. Because they said what? Ask. No, no, no. Keep on asking. You know, I was thinking about this. When I asked the Lord, do I have to repeat myself to ask Him again and again? I don't believe so. What I need to do is when I have it, I ask God, then He said, put me to remembrance. So my asking should be based on what He promised. Now, we talk about confession and how important it is. You have to understand something. I shared this, I think, last week or the week before, that this young man was dying and the doctors had given up. There's a young wife there and a man of God. Brother Norul Hayes came in because it was requested by the pastor to come and pray. He, and the doctors had given up. He prayed for the young man. As he walked out, he called his wife. He said, the Lord is telling me to tell you this. He said, keep saying he will live and not die. Now, wait a minute. Where did he get it from? The book of Psalms. You will not die but live to glorify the works of God. He said, don't stop. Keep saying it. And he left. I think a year or two years later, he came back to the same place. And the pastor said, do you recognize this young man? He said, no. He said, that's the young man you told your, his wife to pray. So he called the wife. He said, what did you do? She said, you told me to say that. I kept saying it thousands of times. I'm getting at something. Wait a minute. Thousands of, day and night I kept saying he will live. There was no hope in the natural. No doctor gave me any hope whatsoever that my husband would live. But I kept saying what the Bible says. Kept saying what? What the, what the, not what the doctor said. Not what Google said. Not what others said. But what the Bible said. Are you with me, everybody? What the Bible said, I said. And here he is today. I was thinking about it. What did he, what was this woman doing? We would say confession. Yes, but it was more than confession. She was reminding God of his promise. He said, put me to what? Remembrance. So what was she doing? She was putting God to remembrance. God, this is what you said. This is why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. That means if you hook on to something, don't let go until you catch it. Never say give up. Keep on until you grasp it.